Hello and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I'm going to improve this really old scratch built building that I've got here. Uh, this I built, ooh, I got it to maybe 20, 20 years ago, uh, maybe even more, 20, 22, 23 years ago. I've, I've had it for ages. It was one of a, a set of buildings that I built uh, a long time ago for 15 mil wargaming and it's a little terraced house with a bombed out central one. Uh, it comes to pieces like this, uh, it's got a roof over there on both of these and to be honest I mean you know for its time it's not too bad however I feel it's time to actually tart this up and get it looking a little bit better. It's a bit old and a bit tired at this point uh, and it's you know quite basic. So we've got the basic shell there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, embossed brick printed paper. Uh, so this will really bring it to life, uh, but I'll show you how I do that, how I go about that. I'm also then going to mount it onto some embossed uh, plastic card as well, uh, to give it a bit of better, a better uh, base for it as well. So the first thing to do was to remove the original base. This was made out of a cereal packet, that's why it's quite thin and bent up. Uh, 25 years ago I didn't have any plastic card or anything to hand like that. So it's just really literally a case of just using a very sharp knife and cutting away around the edge of the base so at least I still had a floor for the interior as well because there's no point cutting it all off I may as well just uh, do this and then I've still got the, uh, the floor. Once that was done it was just a case of then cutting off the window sills and the door frames everything that was standing proud on the front uh, and the outside of the building because I was going to replace these with plastic card anyway uh, I use this very, very sharp knife really just to, to carve these away uh, remember kids don't uh, don't cut towards yourself like I was just doing there uh, always cut away from yourself and uh, ask a parent for help we've got to say that for the safety reasons it, it didn't really matter that this was a bit of a mess I just wanted these to be relatively flat against the the walls of the building so it's just a case of cutting them off and then uh, giving them a scrape down to get any of the older crappy uh, bits and pieces of card that were still left on the uh, on the walls and that was a relatively simple quick job to do and once that was done we moved on to the actual brick paper in itself uh, this was a re again another pretty simple job it was a case of just measuring the height of the stories of each of the buildings because uh, it's basically broken down into four boxes and then measuring out the height for each of those buildings uh, each of those those boxes themselves so the first one I think was about three centimeters uh, high for a 15 millimeter uh, scale building I was using the 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 depth of the height I was going for so basically you measure I measure just slightly higher than three centimeters so about probably about three and a half centimeters just so I've got full coverage and I'm uh, it's, there isn't any gaps above or below on the actual uh, the walls themselves so very simply just uh, using a steel ruler there just cut out a line of paper did that four times for each of the buildings and then smeared PVA glue all over the place the, this straight out of the bottle this is just wood glue dead cheap get it anywhere in any DIY shop and then I would then rub this uh, all over the uh, the the walls just to ensure that I've got a relatively good coverage so it's ready to adhere to any of the brick paper that I'm sticking on there you'll also notice as well I've uh, scored the brick paper on the corners so that it will it actually stands up on its own uh, like three walls uh, that then just literally slots over the outside of the walls there and I press it down as hard as I can uh, just with my hands at this point uh, if this was a solid box I would probably uh, put some kind of weight on there just to hold the paper down or even some elastic bands if I put elastic bands on this it would probably bend in the middle so I didn't want to and as I say I, you know this is a, a quick repair job for what was a very old model uh, anyway so I wasn't I'm not too fussed about being particularly uh, clean and and, and, uh, and neat with this just as long as it looks okay from a distance of the table because it will be with other buildings and stuff so this is basically again exactly the same smearing the PVA all over the outside walls of the 
building itself just getting the using your finger just to get the stuff all over it so you've got a good coverage of everything you can and then simply slipping the paper over the top and that's what I did with all four uh, of these as I say I keep calling them little boxes but that's basically what they are each of the stories are four little boxes so I did that with the uh, ground floor then did it with the second floor as well and you can see I've also actually put on a bit more paper on the gable ends so it's overlapping uh, on the upstairs windows simply because I'm going to trim that down later on and uh, I just wanted some paper on there rather than having gaps when I'm cutting it. The next thing to do was to make the base. Uh, I like to base buildings just because it gives you a little bit of a footprint. You can also put some stuff on there as well like rubble and things surrounding it and it also just raises it above the board as well so it looks a little bit like a pavement or something you know they, uh, no building is built directly onto the ground onto flat ground grassland or anything so this was just a case of measuring it out again using that embossed plastic card this stuff you can get in any railway modeler's shop or you can get it off ebay it's relatively cheap and you can get it in tons of different designs this is like a stonework design uh, i think it's actually meant to be for walls and things but I use it for pavements because it looks like quite an old cobbled uh, street really so that's what I do uh, and again using the steel ruler just measure it out uh, making marks in the paper itself and just cutting it out uh, into a long rectangle that the the, uh, the building will sit on what I will do is I will mount this later on on some thicker plastic card some uh, base uh, some basic plastic card so it's blank this I will just mount on there and that will sit on uh, and again raise it up here we are this is me doing exactly that so I'm using the polystyrene cement this is the best stuff for this job because it slightly melts the plastic and it will melt the plastic on the plastic card it'll melt the plastic on the the white plastic card and then when the two are pressed together it'll form that continual bond I just uh, brush this on with a big brush rather than using the brush from the, the pot of glue because it gave better coverage uh, and actually caught more of the glue on the uh, on the brush itself as well. This will knack your brushes so you know don't be uh, don't use it on your best brushes if you've got any old really old ones use it on that. I have a, a big collection of brushes that I've uh, kept over the years that in various states of disrepair I rarely throw a brush away because you can always use it for dry brushing then it is pressed into place onto the uh, the uh, the base plastic card as i say that stuff is uh, i think it's either two or three mil it's probably two mil plastic card that stuff uh, just press that down let it dry for a little while and then cut it out and you're literally just following the shape of your the base that you've already glued on so it's a relatively simple way of of uh, making a, a a quick base for your your building or any other terrain feature that you're doing in fact uh, I use plastic card quite a lot for this it's a it's a nice uh, pliable uh, material because MDF is good but you do need some specialist tools to cut it sometimes whereas plastic card it's you know it doesn't bend and it's also for these kind of thing it really doesn't bend and it's good for for this kind of this project so I said there was an overlap with some of the brick paper so what I did was basically go around with a very sharp knife a little scalpel and just trim off all that excess as close as I could get it to the top of the walls a uh, very simple job very uh, uh, very easy very quick because you've already kind of got your, your templates with the walls already and then I went back and cut out all the windows exactly the same I found that if you push it in from the front uh, you're not forcing the brick paper away from the uh, from the model itself so that's why I'm cutting it up from the front and you can basically shove the knife in and just run it along until you actually hit the the wall or the window so you're getting a pretty good cut all the way around and if you need to you can just go back and just trim off all the little excess bits that you want anyway or just glue them down either way so I do that with all the uh, the windows and the doors on the uh, on the ground floor and then go and do the upstairs windows and doors and again just cutting each one of these out taking care uh, but it's a pretty simple 
easy little job and then once that's done it starts looking more like a house again uh, but we've got a couple of issues here because you can still see the white of the paper from the brick paper on the edges so we're gonna have to cover that up in a little while uh, and also we've still got no uh, window sills or door frames so that's the next thing to do back to the plastic card the two mil stuff being very carefully I really carefully measured out uh, a strip of this and I think I think I did the uh, door frames and the window sills about a centimeter wide uh, sorry a millimetre wide <laughs> slightly different and uh, basically scored them out and then cut them to the length that I wanted which is about two, two centimetres and because I'd already scored them I was able just to run the knife down a few times until they separated out so dead dead simple job this uh, I don't really use plastic card so much in modelling apart from things like this where it's really simple because uh, I'm not great with it so I'm not very uh, very neat I know some people get great results from the stuff uh, I generally don't because I'm cack handed the next thing then was to get those window sills in place I used polystyrene cement for this simply because it's got that melting power with plastic so once it was in place and they were pressed down hard the plastic would actually melt to the uh, the brick wall the brick paper and that's them all done uh, quite a simple little job and it really just adds that little little bit of realism to the building itself it makes it look more like an actual house you know rather than just something with flat windows and just that little 3d uh, detail really bring really brings it together a little bit more i think and again you can do as much as you want or as little as you want you could do um, coping stones above the the tops of the windows any kind of decoration you feel then i was moving on to more detailing this was the chimneys i cut out four squares because obviously a chimney is a box and then marks on where the roof was the the slant of the roof itself if i again if i was doing this today my roofs would be neater but these were all built with the uh, the card the mounting card that i did that i used years ago so they're a bit of a bit of a state and they're not particularly neat so i i can't just measure a 45 degree angle because it's not going to be that it's you know probably something more like 50 degrees but then i cut out the little corner uh, for the roof on two of these pieces and then they will be turned into two little boxes uh, I did this twice for both chimneys I did think about having a central chimney and, and uh, having it in the middle middle one that's collapsed but no I, I didn't want to cheat I, uh, a chimney just adds that little bit extra to a building it's really strange uh, they were just literally painted together uh, Put, I put brick paper around them and I used a small square of I think that's about 15 millimeters square MDF base that I had kicking about two of them painted those in brick red uh, just to edge off that brick paper you can see you can see I'm also painting the edge of it there where the the join of the brick paper is the brick paint I was using is not a perfect match for the for the bricks but it's close enough and it's not that stark white so it's good enough for me this is just a humbrol thing brick red i think it's called uh, acrylic and then just paint the tops of the chimneys like this you've got these two chimneys dead easy uh, to make that was probably the the most most faff that i had in building this and using the same brick paint i went around the edges of the paper and also where exposed brickwork would be as well so down these edges here where it's collapsed I'm going to come back and weather this stuff I wanted to leave the interior burnt as though it had been in a fire so I was quite happy with leaving that wall as it was I could have possibly put something like some uh, wallpaper in there again this is a very old model I don't I'm not that bothered about doing too much to it I just wanted it to look a little bit better than it than it originally was so I just go around with a relatively large brush painting all those edges in so that when the two brick uh, pieces are, are side, by, side by side you don't really see the join as much it's all about uh, confusing the eye as much as anything else really you don't have to be particularly detailed and as you can see it's just a case of, of disguising any any marks or any anything that you've you may have done wrong in previous steps so this was a 
a relatively boring little job but it, and it took a little while just because I was I was trying to remain as neat as possible on this but I then uh, finished off the top finished off the upper stories and then worked my way down to the uh, the bottom story as well doing exactly the same thing just going around with our paintbrush making sure that every bit of white paper that you can see is covered at least uh, this included some places where it had been ripped and things as I said our brick paint is a slightly different shade to the actual brick paper itself I mean you could do do better and just actually match the two I didn't bother because I'm going to weather this anyway I'm going to give you some washes and things and that will bring the two together you, you'll be barely noticeable later on and you know I've said it before you're the one that's going to notice this stuff nobody else uh, they'll be having to look really diff really hard at, at these models to, to actually pick anything out like that. Uh, as long as it doesn't look too obvious and too stark and too different, uh, then you're onto a good thing. You can always, you know, different colour bricks are different coloured, basically, uh, depending on the firing processes. And then it was onto the the next step, which was just painting the window sills and the windows themselves, the window frames and I wanted I didn't want these to be white they were originally white I didn't want them to be white because I just wanted to make them look as though they were individual houses painted by different people and if you look at any row of terrace houses each one is generally different uh, so I just chose a couple of uh, paint colors that I wanted to use this one is fawn uh, which is uh, quite a light tan color and I just went around the inside of the the uh, the window frames and also on the window sills as well just being very careful with a, a relatively small brush just to get in uh, this was the worst part because there were chunks missing out of this when I'd originally cut it because my knife wasn't particularly sharp 25 years ago so the uh, there's there's lumps and things missing out of there so that took a little while just to fill in uh, the interiors of the actual uh, uh, of the, the the window frames and things again if I was doing this now, I'd be a lot neater. Uh, I'd probably use a, a brand new sharp knife for this. The other building I did, uh, I did it in in dark red again, just because I I like the colour. So I thought this is this is the colour somebody might want to paint their house. And also this helped as well because I painted the upstairs window sills and windows in the same colours as the one downstairs. So you could basically match the building uh, the upstairs and the downstairs very quickly instead of having to see which of the the two halves of the uh, upstairs fits better or not just a case of being very neat here ensure that you keep it within uh, the lines i also painted the gable ends as well i wasn't entirely sure what to do about these i thought if you look at some terrace houses they do occasionally have a different colored gable end you know where where there's some covering or something for the for the uh, waterproofing of the roof and things so you can kind of get away with it calling it that instead of putting brick paper on there then it was a case of going back and doing the doors so I measured the holes uh, where the doors were cut out two rectangles of uh, plastic card and then gently scored these uh, to look like the uh, door panels the panels on the doors these were then painted very easily paint again i just chose the colors randomly i think i did green and red i just decided to uh, whatever color somebody might want to paint their front door originally the building didn't have doors in it so this is again a vast improvement it just makes it look like an actual uh, building and then i got on with the agrax earth shade uh, my favorite shade this i just Splashed all over the uh, the windows that I'd recently painted. I also uh, gave the base a cover of this as well. You can see there on the right hand side. Uh, this is a great uh, a great shader because it gets right into the corners. That was the weathering enough for the base. And then it was time to start sticking on these chimneys as well. Once these were dry, they uh, the brickwork on those had been given a bit of an Agrax uh, earth shade wash put in the door frames and it really then starts to look more like an actual house as well uh, instead of just being an open door if you wanted to you could put the door open you could put it smashed up there's you know en endless possibilities it's really up to you completely 
uh, they'd already been washed with Agrax Earthshade, uh, so they'd already got some shading on them. You can actually see the base of the original model there. Uh, that advert was for Euro 96, so that shows you when I built this, either 1995 or 1996. That's how old this, this model is. Super glued it down to its base, and we were on to the weathering. So I washed this in a oil wash. So this is actually oil paints that have been thinned down with uh, with white spirits and it's a really nice grainy texture you get off it. I usually use it for buildings and big areas, big surfaces. So basically I just washed the entire building in this. Uh, this is grime and, and grease and all sorts of stuff that's just built up over, over time uh, on the outside of the building. Again, you could be neat, you could be uh, messy with this. Weathering is really completely up to you. You can do as much or as little as you want. This is a bombed out building. I figured it's been in a firefight. It's going to be messy. There's going to be dust everywhere and all kinds of crap. And then I got onto the rest of the weathering as well, so the burning. Uh, this is just black paint. I'm dry brushing it heavily into the areas where there's going to be more burning. So some of the windows will have burn marks, scorch marks coming up. And you can see the edge where the bomb out, bombed out has been. I've, I've basically blacked that up a bit. I go on and use weathering powders for the rest of the building. These are just powders you can buy on the market. I've also made some myself as well. And you're basically just dabbing this stuff on and smearing it around. And it looks like uh, either gun soot or just actual dust itself from fire, uh, charcoal, all that kind of thing. Again, weathering, you can do as much or as little as you really want with, uh, with weathering. Uh, I decide beforehand where my building is going to be, what kind of theatre it's in, and that will affect what weathering you want to do with it. And it's just a case of getting some of the dust onto your brush and dabbing it in places really, randomly. So that's how it looks once it's all weathered. Uh, we're still not finished yet, but it's certainly getting there at this point. Uh, I, I will varnish it, I spray varnish. Uh, and then I moved on to the roofs as well just to clean these up. Uh, I repainted them in, in neutral grey by Vallejo just to give just so I could re-weather them and give them another wash again of that ink wash uh, and just do some little bits and pieces of weathering here and there because it was quite an old paint job that I'd done on them, as I say, you know, a quarter of a century ago. I just wanted them slightly neater. Uh, those are tiles that I'd built at the time. Again, I would probably redo those if I was doing this from scratch. And really, to start to finish it off, we're moving into the real last last phase of this now. Now I, I started to cover this the central area in brick rubble. This is a brick rubble mix that I made years ago. I used to sell it on eBay, but I stopped. And I keep it for myself because it's a really good modelling thing. I can't exactly remember how I made it, uh, so please don't ask. Uh, but... Uh, it, it was basically a combination of different paints and various uh, bits and pieces of rubble that you would find, uh, sand and railway modelers things. And I basically slathered this in the areas I want to be rubble filled. I've slathered them in PVA and dropped the rubble mix all over. So that central area, because this is brick red or has brick colour in it, it looks like a collapsed building rather than the uh, the grey that it originally was when I used cat litter on. You can see I've still got cat litter on it so I'm using that as the base anyway so it just adds to that texture. You can just probably just make out the the rubble there in the central section of the building on the right hand side. I did the same where where re rubble would catch anywhere else so these tiny little bits of remains of floors I just put rubble on those. Again it's just a little detail that just adds a little bit of something to the model itself. I finished off the upstairs with this as well. So basically you put the PVA glue on, then drop the rubble mix over the top of that or even dip it in whichever. Uh, and then I would go over with some of the, the really fine stuff just to fill in the spaces in between where the big lumps are. What I'm really looking for is where the big lumps are going to be because that's what I want you see there so I'm putting on the real fine stuff afterwards and that really covers it up and brings it all together and then the very 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 final thing to do was just to add windows you don't have to do this 
I did because again it just adds that little extra tiny bit of realism to the model itself you know buildings have windows in them you could spend some time in look, making these smashed uh, I've done that on other models in these I just wanted them as you know uh, glass panes not every window gets smashed in a war uh, so I just wanted these ones and anyway I was at this point I just wanted the thing finished so I, I didn't bother cutting these panes down into anything easier I just super glued these in place uh, just behind the window because I'm not bothered about what it looks like inside at this point and that was it completely finished uh, as I say, it's not perfect because it was built 25 years ago uh, and I was cack handed when I did it 25 years ago. But I think it certainly looks a lot better than it did when I started. Uh, just with the addition of the brick paper uh, and also some weathering. You'll notice as well that some of the glass is frosted. But again, that could just be muck and rubbish that's been thrown up by the street fighting. So I don't mind. At the same time, I also built this factory as well. This was uh, a revisit of an old factory, four-piece factory building that I had that I thought could do with a bit of a revamp. Uh, so I was building the two of these together, and this is how this one turned out. I was quite pleased with it. It looks a lot better than it did before. Unfortunately, I don't have any photos of it from before. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please subscribe, leave me a comment, um, uh, give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.